Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about, um, oh, credit card debt in Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so this is an issue I wanted to bring up and I don't, do not, like there's a comment that somebody said like how much credit card debt you have, I have none. I have no debts at all. I don't have student loans, I don't have, um, I don't have any debt that on the books. Uh, I currently rent, so that's good. Um, and my car is paid for, uh, insurance and all this other stuff like you pay, like bills are bills, right? You can't get rid of bills. There's no way to get rid of those. And I work at a job I'm extremely happy at and it's a fun job and I'm pretty good at it. So yeah, uh, let me explain how to go about purchasing all of this stuff and not getting, so I, again, I'm not like hand over fist money, right? Um, I do have other hobbies, and my other hobbies include uh, collecting uh, figures, anime figures, as well as traveling and conventions. I spend more money traveling than I do on physical items. Uh, the issue here is a lot of times when I say I spend 950 on magic cards, or maybe 600 of it is the new set, and then another 250 is uh, of kind of like vo foil voices and stuff like that. But once you're doing the foil verse, once you, bar once you bundle these two things, you get the cards at a very good price. So I get my voices, I got my, um, I got them all at extremely good prices. Because if you're spending, if you spend nine hundred and fifty dollars somewhere at, you know, at, at two different locations actually. So I spent X amount. I want to say like three hundred and fifty dollars in one location, and then six hundred in another location and 600 was spent at a smaller location at a very small store, um, they definitely get it. They completely get it. And they understand that, hey, this dude is spending $600 with us all the time. We should give him a good deal. And the deals I got were fantastic um, on the legacy staples or the uh, modern staples. Um, pack of negations, the voices, I'm trying to think, uh, kitchen things, I didn't have a place at rebands. Visions, um, that pile of cards just came out to be re relatively cheap. It came out to be a little better than, a little more than the Strike Zone buy list price, which is what we were going off because the guy was going to sell to Strike Zone. The store owner was going to sell to Strike Zone. So overall, it was a very good deal. And when you have cards like that, that are legacy staples, that are modern staples and stuff, then why should you worry about the value of those cards? Because they only go up in time. Plus the fact that you can directly sell them or whatever, like it's not difficult for me to move them uh, if I feel like moving them, given um, my reputation as well as my uh, eBay accounts and all that stuff. So I, I could probably, I would just move them in person actually. I think it would be easiest for me just to call up a friend and say, hey, these are the cards I have, do you want them? And you would just go over and buy them and I would make a little bit of money that way. Now for the $600 and the Magic Origin itself, a lot of that stuff is recouped. Um, when I mean a lot of it is recouped, I make play sets of cards and then I sell or trade them away for legacy staples. If I'm trading them for legacy staples, then I just sell them. Then I have an asset that is movable and I can move very easily. Uh, Magic Origins for the first two weeks moves easier than legacy. It moves easier than modern. And that's the reason good people want to build the new decks. They want to build the artifact deck. They need to get all the cards from Magic Origins and there's only one dude with all the cards that they do need and they can build a whole deck from that one guy instead of ordering and waiting for it. No one wants to wait to test the new deck. They want to be the first one to play the new deck. No one wants to wait for Foil Narset. They want to be the first one to own Foil Narset. The same with any Planeswalker. Um, all of that stuff is so easy to trade away within the first week. A lot of it's gone right now. I don't know what time this video is being posted but uh, last FNM was the first time you could use Magic Origins and all of it's gone. Like all of it's gone. Like, um, no, hold on. Mm, oh no, it was two weeks. So it would be the second week and I traded them all away. Um, all my Planeswalkers are gone, minus the ones I want to keep. All my, um, just the large majority of cards over $5 in Magic Origins, including pile drivers, they're all gone now. And that makes a lot of sense because Again, people want to have pile drivers. The store I go to doesn't open boxes. 
So you can trade like crazy and you can trade for valuable cards that people don't play. Like primarily both player groups that I uh, play with are standard only. They don't really care about modern. So if you give them the same, they, they will look on TCG player, do mediums and stuff like that. And they're, but they trade directly into modern, directly from modern for your new standard cards. But they won't trade for old standard cards, right? They just trade for new ones. So what, once it comes down to it, uh, it's very easy for you to recoup out of the $600, like 400 of it. I would say 66%, very easy for you to re recoup. Cons of Tarkir, I'm probably going to recoup 100% of it, given the fact that all I did was trade for Festlands um, with non-Festland cards, including the Rock, the Rhino at the time was more worth more, the Mantis was like 5 or $6 at the time as well. Uh, the Ascendancy, Just K Ascendancy, a lot of those cards were extremely valuable and now they are no longer, but at the same time you can trade them in the Fetch Lands which retain their value. So uh, the hobby, like when I'm making the video, I am spending 950 in cash or a like credit card, some combination of the both, but at the end of the day after, I would say six months, um, out of the 950, so the play mats and stuff, I don't, I write that off because that's just play mats and stuff. Uh, even this t-shirt. <laughs> and uh, out of the 950, maybe like I can recoup 750 of it. So I can recoup all, definitely all the legacy staples um, I purchased, I can recoup if I wanted to. And then the Magic Origins uh, set itself um, will probably take a little longer to recoup, but it will recoup itself very nicely. Cons of Tarkir, it's already, it's already net neutral. Like all that money I spent on cons has already come back to me. Um, in the form of cards, and that's different from uh, in the form of, you know, like cash, right? So there's de generally, you know, you want cash over cards. But if you're fine with cards anyway, and you need to make modern decks and stuff like that, and you're looking long-term wise, not a big problem. Bye, guys.